right, it's time to eat. Let's eat, shall we? Our next guest on Foodie Friday is Chef Lamar Moore, not to be confused with Shamar Moore. I mean, I don't know. Shamar Moore's always got a shirt off. He can't really do that in the kitchen. Lamar got the big culinary bug from his grandma. While growing up on the south side of Chicago, he's probably cooked for your favorite celebrity, and we want to welcome him to start your day. Chef Moore, welcome to you, sir. I mean, I don't know. I should ask you. I shouldn't just assume you're not related to Shamar <laughs> Moore. Maybe you are. Uh, what's the verdict? No, I'm not related to him. I kind of get that from time to time. I wish I was, but <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, keep your shirt on, and, you know, um, he probably can't cook anyway, okay? Um, <laughs> this, but you're both good-looking guys, and you know your way around a kitchen, Chef Moore. Um, today you're cooking a wood-fired grilled half chicken. It this The script says it seems simple, but when you're talking about wood fire and all that, that doesn't seem simple to me, actually. Um, what sets your chicken apart? Is it just like all about the flavor? It is. It's all about the flavor. So, again, we take half chicken. Uh, it gets marinated with uh, some herbs and spices, mm. a little bit of lemon zest, lemon oil, and it gets cooked over an applewood wood fire for about 15, 20 minutes, and it's unctuous when it's done. All right, we want you to go ahead and start oh, cooking while we continue talking to you. You go ahead and do your thing there because you were raised in Chicago. We know you know how to cook. It's a great food city. What are some of your favorite dishes there that inspired you to become a chef? Um, two. Uh, one of my favorite dishes is uh, shrimp and grits, which I think everyone loves. Ooh. I put a little egg on mine. I love uh, eggs on a lot of my entrees, so um, that's one of my favorite dishes. Why do you like uh, the egg on there? What, is, what does the egg do on your entrees? See, I do a sunny side egg, and once you like poke that egg nice. and drag it into the, your oh, your nice. grits, man, it just adds a little bit more umami, a little bit more creaminess. <sighs> yes, sir. So, <laughs> one of my faves, man. All right. So, um, uh, so talking about the chicken. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tell us what you're doing. No, no, no. I was well, going to ask you about something else, but I I do want to see what you're doing there. Well, I kind of I took the wood fire. I took the chicken off the wood fire, so I'm I'm gonna pan sear it a little bit just to give it a little bit of crispness on the skin, as you probably see there. Um, and then I got some heirloom vegetables too, and some uh, potatoes. So I have some um, um, baby red onions, white onions, a little bit of uh, cherry tomatoes, mm. carrots, uh, Yukon Go potatoes, which is a little bit creamy, and then there's uh, some purple potatoes, has a little starch in it, a little bit of butter. And then when we take the chicken, we uh, take the chicken and make our own natural jus, uh, which is basically taking chicken bones, roast them, and then making a little quick stock in there, Look at just that. to add some of that same flavor. And I'm going to mount it with a little bit of butter. Again, having a little, you know, southern twang, you definitely want to add some butter. Butter butter kind of puts everything together. <laughs> it makes everything better. <laughs> and it helps it all. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. But, Chef, you know, I get my gravy in a packet, um, but that's nice that you're boiling or doing whatever you're simmering the bones. It looks delicious. Yeah. I, I want to ask you a couple questions because you mentioned the skin, and I noticed that good, you know, chefs like yourself, you don't want to cook without the skin on the chicken, do you? You don't want any part no. of it. No. You got to have good crispy skin. It's nothing like slicing into that chicken and you get some good skin in there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I skin. love it. And then, yeah, and then if you'll allow me, um, I know you're a Bears fan. I hope so because you were their former uh, sous chef for the Bears. And I want to know what it's like cooking for a bunch of hungry football players. We know they can eat, but do they have the palate for uh, mm. this kind of, you know, this is high-end food you're cooking, chef. You know what? Believe it or not, they do. Uh, and I'll tell you, you know, when I first started cooking in the stadium, that was a misconception of what you get in a stadium. I'm used to hot dogs and nachos, which you do get. <laughs> but once you start going into the suites and the players, a lot of them have dietary yeah. restrictions. Like back when I cooked, uh, Jay Cutler was the quarterback then, and I did not know he was diabetic. So we used to have to send bananas down to the line to, for him to uh, continue his energy throughout the game. So you start to learn and uh, get a little insight on those players, too, and what they need and what they like and then you start to see their big appetites and what they enjoy eating wow well speaking of enjoying to eat you got to give us the lowdown on when you cook for former president and first lady barack and michelle obama i need all the details what did they order and and where you're sweating and just thinking about the pressure you got to get it right well you know i cooked them in i cooked for them a couple different times actually and what the first time was at the stadium um back then they had the nato event here in chicago and so that menu was very nerve-wracking because, you know, you have those type, you know, that type of power coming to Chicago. Everybody's overseeing the menu. So 
we made a mistake and one uh, had a dessert called the chocolate bomb and we also know that that's not gonna fly so it was oh, literally like a chocolate oh, cake in a dome shit. so we had to rename it a few times <laughs> oh, um, oh, but the second time i do that was, now yeah i i i, I was told yeah no that's it not happens. gonna work <laughs> it does happen um the second time it was for an event for the obama foundation and mm. so they had rotisserie chicken there was a a uh, really nice glazed mm. salmon that I made and a pecan pie for dessert. Oh, nice. Okay. So wow. very excited about well, that. Well, listen, when you cook in stadium, we'd like to get you to cook next time. Kanye has a listening part. You could charge three, four times the price. I mean, that. I saw look how that. much he charged just for the popcorn and stuff. That's crazy, right? I know you have a yes. quote on your website. It's an Angela Burke quote. Um, your website, LamarMoore.com. Um, it says, mm -hmm. be patient. You have to be able to put in the hard work and don't forget the person behind you. Why mm. did you put that quote on there? So, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of mentors. And then when I moved to California as a young culinarian, I had a great mentor who, one, moved me in his house to, to get acclimated to California. And I had to be patient with my career. You know, I was so used to rushing and rushing and rushing. Didn't really understand mm -hmm. that, you know, trying to be a chef in this industry and a black chef on top of that. You know, you have to have patience oh, and allow yeah. your, your food to speak through what you want to do and allow people to really come to you. So that's something that's endear to my heart. And I try to mentor and teach that, you know, as much as I possibly can. And if you stay true to that, there's no doubt you will continue to be successful. Now, you're finished with your chicken there. We want to look at that. But I also know you make an award-winning mm -hmm. barbecue brisket Gorgeous. nachos. That sounds mm -hmm. amazing. Oh, you almost lost it. Oh, I you almost lost The chicken almost ran away. But you did. <laughs> it was there. that juicy. It almost <laughs> yeah. slid off the plate. That was beautiful catch there. Wait, yeah. you have to, to catch food like that all the time? Does that happen a lot you, where you stuff, flipping stuff is just like, been hot. Ooh. Had hey, he dropped that chicken, I'd have been so hot. Oh, you know how I feel about good <laughs> food. Okay, wait, wait, real quick. <laughs> if you did drop right? it just then, do you apply the five-second rule? Tell the truth. Or, come on. Tell the truth, chef. No. Nobody's back there. Tell my kitchen, man. That was a test. <laughs> that was a test. <laughs> it ain't the health department's no, watching, chef. I know, but at man. home, I would have scooped it right up. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have put all that hard get work into making it. My floor is clean. Look. Right. <laughs> they like, go get them. Oh, that looks good. Oh, gosh. Well, that looks good. Thank you so much. Chef. You're missing the we egg on top, chef. What happened to the egg? Look, that's oh, a different no recipe. egg on the chicken. Oh, okay. But you know what? I have a chicken hash that has an egg on there. So oh, that'll work. There's that. All right, Chef Lamar chef Moore. Up, chef it up. Thank you so much for spending Foodie Friday with us. We'll be right back. He was great. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs>